Hello and welcome to another weekly analysis behind the news. While the media and organized leftists would rather have us focus on the travel ban case that appears to be headed for the Supreme Court, are you keeping an eye on what Republicans in Congress are doing? We specifically mention them because nothing is going to get through Congress without their approval. Now, Bloomberg News reported last week that prominent Republicans pitch carbon tax plan to top Trump aides. What? They write, former Secretary of State James Baker and other members of the New Climate Leadership Council pressed the case in a 45-minute meeting that included President Donald Trump's top economic advisor, Gary Cohn, Chief of Staff Rance Priebus, and senior aide Kellyanne Conway. The signs are very encouraging, Ted Halstead, who founded the council, said after the meeting. Two weeks into this new administration, we have positioned our solution as the most promising climate solution if they want to go there. Baker also met briefly with Vice President Mike Pence as the old guard Republicans tried to persuade the Trump administration that a carbon tax imposed in exchange for abolishing a slew of environmental regulations is an insurance policy against the risks of climate change. We know we have an uphill slog to get Republicans interested in this, Baker said before the White House meeting, but a conservative free market approach is a very Republican way of approaching the problem. Folks, any plan to address global warming, global cooling, or climate change of any kind is merely a scheme to get government into areas of control that are neither constitutional nor welcome. You don't need to get mired in the details of data to determine that this is an issue about control. Just look at their solutions. Tax the air that we breathe out? Are you serious? Any Republican claiming that this is a viable area of taxation is not liberty-minded. Rather, they should be run out of town. These are folks who are not conservative, but they are globalists. James Baker served under Presidents Reagan and H.W. Bush. If you wonder why conservatism didn't accomplish much in the way of constitutionalism during these administrations, it's because of the influence of men like Baker, who is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations which is a globalist outfit that has dominated presidential administrations for decades. The article also points out, so we get to page two here, that Hank Paulson, who served as tre secretary, or excuse me, as treasury, treasury secretary under President George W. Bush, and previously has advocated a carbon tax through his think tank, the Paulson Institute. Besides Baker, who served as Secretary of State and Treasury Secretary under two Republican administrations, other members include former Secretary of State George Shultz, Sequoia Capital Operations partner Thomas Stevenson, and former Chairman of the Board of Walmart, Rob Walton, economic advisors to former Presidents George H.W. Bush and Ronald Reagan also are involved in the effort. And both Paulson and Shultz are, you guessed it, CFR members. Further into the article, Baker himself conceded he remains somewhat of a skeptic about the extent to which man is responsible for climate change. But, as he puts it, the risks are too great to ignore. Ladies and gentlemen, the only risks too great to ignore are having these guys anywhere near Washington, D.C. if we value the Constitution and the independence of our country. So let's be sure to closely watch Congress to ensure that this type of lunacy doesn't gather any more support. Now, two weak spots in President Trump's policies include his foreign policy and his approach to using the federal government to support local police. For instance, the New American reported on the Navy SEAL raid in Yemen that killed 14 Al-Qaeda operatives as well as 15 civilians and one Navy SEAL. The writer asked a series of solid questions regarding the constitutionality of such an operation, including, should the U.S. military have boots on the ground there? Should we be engaged in a war in Yemen without the constitutionally required declaration of war and without even a congressional debate? Should a single person decide when to plunge the nation into the crucible of war, regardless 
if he is President Obama or President Trump? Does our military interventionism in Yemen and elsewhere in the Middle East reduce the terrorist threat and make America safer? Or does it have the opposite effects? And is the interventionism worth the sacrifice, including the ultimate sacrifice of our soldiers? And he continues, while conservatives are optimistic that Donald Trump will reverse many of the harmful policies of Obama, particularly on domestic issues, the raid, which was the first commando operation approved by Trump, indicates that on foreign policy, the Trump administration is more likely than not to follow the neoconservative interventionist policies of George W. Bush. So you can see that while the 2016 presidential election was a repudiation of globalism, globalist forces are finding ways to ensure that their agenda does not entirely stop. And one of the ways is through foreign policy as envisioned by top globalist Henry Kissinger and the Republican neoconservative wing. Another way that globalist forces can worm their way into a Trump administration is through the creation of a federal police force, which would take away what remains of local accountability to the communities police serve. A federal police would also serve the interests of the federal government instead of local communities. Now, once again, the New American reports President Trump endorsed civil asset forfeiture during a recent meeting he had with sheriffs from across the country. They write, Acting Attorney General Bonte explained, Well, we have what is called equitable sharing, where we, have, where we usually share it with the local police departments for whatever portion they worked on in the case. And it was a very successful program, very popular with the local law enforcement community. They sum it up here. No doubt it is, since local law enforcement is able to procure through this civil asset forfeiture cars, boats, cash, and other valuable property through this program in which local law enforcement and federal agents work together on a case. In many instances, those caught into the net of civil, uh, civil asset forfeiture are presumed guilty instead of innocent and have the burden of proving that they are not drug dealers instead of police having to prove an accused guilt in the court of law. Not only is it an unconstitutional tool that has been abused time and time again, it's also an avenue for entangling alliances between federal agencies and local police with local communities caught in the middle as victims. Instead of embracing it, Trump should be disavowing it and rolling back all federal initiatives to work with state or local police. Globalists would love a federal police, so let's make sure steps are not taken in that direction. And a great way to do so is to create a support your local police committee. Visit JBS.org for more information. Now, one Republican congressman who is getting things right is Representative Thomas Massey from Kentucky. Last week, he introduced H.R. 899. Now, the entire bill, the entire bill reads, the Department of Education shall terminate on December 31st, 2018. It's one sentence long. Now, let's follow that one up with a series of those bills that get rid of many other unconstitutional federal agencies. Visit JBS.org to tell Congress to support and pass this bill, as well as to introduce a companion bill in the Senate. There's also a link in the video description. If you like what we do, then be sure to join us to battle against the globalist agenda. There's no better time to do that than right now. Visit JBS.org for more information. And be sure to like and share this video with family and friends. Sign up for our e-newsletters and subscribe to our social media channels. Until next week, we'll see you then.